In this video, we'll talk about methods for choosing which variables should be included in regression models. In terms of the overall flow of our class, now that we've discussed how to evaluate models with tools like adjusted R squared, mean squared error, and cross validation, we can use these tools to build good models. In this phase of the course, we'll talk about methods for constructing models. To motivate why there is particular interest in methods that help build models, let's take a glimpse at the upstate New York housing data that we've looked at previously. We see that there are 15 predictors to consider when building models for house price. That can be a lot to consider. In this video, we'll begin our tour of methods that can help with this. Generally, the area of statistical methods that deals with the task of what predictors to use in model building is called model selection. There are a few general spheres of model selection methods that we'll consider in this course. The first general area is subset selection, which is the subject of this video. Subset selection methods look at different subsets of predictors to build the best model. What does best mean? Best refers to whatever quality metric we've chosen, often adjusted R squared or cross-validated mean squared error. For subset selection methods, we'll look at best subset selection and forward and backward stepwise selection methods. The second general area is called shrinkage or regularization, which we'll talk about next. The idea behind these methods is to penalize the inclusion of predictors that are only weakly informative of the response. Methods in this area include lasso and ridge regression. The last area is dimension reduction. The idea here is to reduce the number of predictors by creating new predictors that are functions of the existing ones. We'll look at principal components regression a bit later in this course when we talk about principal components analysis. But let's start our tour of subset selection methods by talking about best subset selection. When we have p predictors, there are two to the p possible models that can be formed from the inclusion and exclusion of these predictors. Why? Because for every predictor, there are two choices, include it or exclude it. Two choices for each of these p predictors results in two to the p possible models. In a best subset selection procedure, all of these models are fit, and the one with the highest adjusted R squared or lowest cross-validated mean squared error is chosen. So for four variables, for example, there are 16 models to fit. Four one variable models, six two variable, four three variable, one four variable, and one zero variable model. The zero variable model is the one with just an intercept. Oftentimes, software that implements best subset selection will provide you with the best model of each size. Best subset selection is conceptually simple. It just tries all possible models formed from including and excluding variables. But note that it does not automatically try transformations of the predictors or interactions between variables, which can definitely be important. Another downside is that it is computationally expensive. With just 10 predictors, over a thousand models have to be fit. And as we get even more predictors, it quickly becomes impossible to even run best subset selection. Another subset selection procedure is forward stepwise selection. In forward stepwise selection, the idea is to add variables one at a time, choosing the best variable to add each time. Again, best refers to the model quality metric that we've chosen, often adjusted R squared or cross-validated mean squared error. We start with an empty model that only has an intercept, and in the first stage, we consider all of the single variable models. In this example, there are just four predictors, so we consider models with just predictor A, just B, just C, and just D. It turns out that adding C results in a model with the lowest cross-validated mean squared error, so we add it to the model. In the next stage, we start from a model with predictor C. We then consider adding A, B, or D. It turns out that the model that adds A results in the low, lowest cross-validated mean squared error. So in the third stage, we start from the C plus A model and consider adding B or D. Adding B results in the lowest cross-validated mean squared error. And in the last stage, we start with the C plus A plus B model 
and we only have d left to consider. So we end up with the best one, two, three, and four variable models. And to choose one final model, we can select from among these with adjusted r squared or cross-validated mean squared error. This time, best is in quotes because the model selected in forward stepwise selection might not actually be the best two and three variable models. Why? Because stepwise selection methods are so-called greedy algorithms, they don't fit all possible models. In the first stage, all possible one variable models are fit, and there's only one possible for four variable model. But not all of the two and three variable models are explored because we restrict ourselves to models that contain C in stage two and models that contain both C and A in stage three. This behavior is called greedy behavior in algorithm jargon. This is a great improvement on computational time over best subset selection, but it is possible to miss the overall best model because we don't explore all of them. And like best subset selection, transformations of predictors and interactions are not automatically tried. Backward stepwise selection is similar to forward, but instead removes variables one at a time, each time removing the worst or least useful variable. Just like best, worst refers to the evaluation metric used. We start with a full model that has all predictors, and in the first stage, we consider removing each one of the four predictors. Removing either B, C, or D results in high cross-validated mean squared error, suggesting that they're useful predictors because error goes up a lot when they're removed from the model. On the other hand, removing A results in the lowest cross-validated mean squared error, suggesting that it's the weakest predictor of the four. Removing it does the least harm. So we remove A, and in stage two, we start with a model with B, C, and D. Now we consider removing one of these three predictors. This time, removing B and retaining C and D results in a model with the lowest cross-validated mean squared error. Removing B does the least harm. So in stage three, we remove B and start with a C plus D model. We consider removing one of these. This time, removing D does the least harm. And in the last stage, we remove D, and we're left with the single one variable model, C. As with forward stepwise selection, we end up with four models that we can choose from with either adjusted R squared or cross validated mean squared error. Note that backwards and forward stepwise selection can give different results because of the greedy behavior. Not all possible models are tried, and it's possible for forward and backward to look at different subsets of models and thus to give different results. An important point to highlight as you become machine learning practitioners is that when you have many methods that look reasonable for a task, trying several of them, comparing the results, and reporting all results is key to doing good science. Another important point that you should be aware of is that there are reservations about these subset selection methods within the professional community. For one, many feel that these automated variable selection methods encourage practitioners to not think about their data carefully because we can just dump our data in and get out of model. Also, there are clear problems that have been demonstrated with statistical inference on the final selected model. Because we come to select a final model by trying many, many models, multiple hypothesis testing is a big issue. With multiple testing, the idea is that Testing many, many hypotheses runs the risk of something being statistically significant just by chance. To cite a few of the problems with statistical inference, the coefficient estimates tend to be overestimated. The confidence intervals on the coefficients can be misleadingly narrow. P-values don't mean what they should mean due to the multiple hypothesis testing. There are several others, but this is just a flavor. If you'd like to read more, feel free to find comments from the statistician Frank Carroll. He's an expert on regression modeling. So in summary, we've looked at subset selection methods that use model quality metrics to search through different models to guide model building in an automated way. Best subset selection is intuitive, but it's computationally expensive because so many models have to be fit. Stepwise selection methods like forward and backwards are faster, 
but aren't guaranteed to find the best subset of predictors. None of these methods automatically consider variable transformations or interactions, and these methods have problems with statistical inference on the final selected model. Generally, the shrinkage or regularization methods that we're going to cover next are preferred choices in the statistical and machine learning communities, but it's important that you've heard about these subset selection methods because they were very popular and still appear in the literature today.